Even the most critically acclaimed or popular TV shows can't avoid mistakes, continuity errors, or faulty facts, some easier to spot than others. As with all shows that end up running for more than three seasons, continuity issues begin to arise when you start to incorporate flashback episodes. Whether it's due to a new team of writers revising a main character's backstory to explore new and funnier territory, or whether it's the more ordinary oversights inherent in having to quickly produce over 20 episodes a year, there's no denying Denying that countless rewatches of our favorite TV shows have produced a sizable list of mistakes. Many of our favorite iconic TV shows have let some mistakes slip by that only the most devoted fans have noticed. They may be seen as small scale siblings to movies, but they require just as many cast and crew to tell their own story the best way possible. That means writers, actors, camera operators, and crew members working in perfect unison. So unsurprisingly, things don't always go as planned, though none of this stuff matters it is fun to comb through a show to find a whole bunch of continuity mistakes anyway. Without further ado, let's have a look at 10 mistakes in popular TV shows that very few noticed. Of course, Friends remains one of the most beloved TV sitcoms of all time, which is made more impressive by the fact that it's the only show from over a decade ago that everyone still seems to be watching on a constant loop. With so many repeats though, and having been exposed to each episode at all times, it's becoming easier to spot those times when continuity mistakes take place. It turns out Ross needs to be taken in and studied by scientists. Given that he doesn't age for three entire seasons of the show, he mentions that he's 29 years old in seasons 3, 4, and 5, even though we've seen three individual Christmas and Thanksgiving episodes over this period, proving that time has passed and that Ross isn't getting any older. On two separate occasions, Ross mentions his birthday month to Joey in conversation. First, he claims it's in December. When's your birthday? May 5th. Why? Oh, I, I, I'm just making a list of people's birthdays. Oh, mine's December. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Years later, he says he was born on October 18th. October 18th. But Ross isn't the only one with birthday issues. In season one episode, the one with the birth, it is implied that Joey is the youngest in the group. But in the season seven episode, the one where they all turn 30, Rachel makes a huge deal out of being the last one of them to turn 30. Stranger Things third season carries one notable continuity error that only some eagle-eyed fans manage to notice. In episode 5, Mike gives Eleven some M&Ms while they are waiting in the hospital. However, among the tiny tasty treats is where the error lies. The colorful assortment that Mike gives Eleven includes a red one. As the third season of the show takes place circa 1985, it is impossible for the red M&M to appear as they didn't exist at the time. At that point, nearly a decade had elapsed since Mars Incorporated had discontinued red M&Ms. That happened in 1976, and it was not until 1987 that they were restored. So, unless that hospital really needed to refill its vending machines with fresher treats, Mike's possession of that colored treat is impossible. The Office fans met salesman Andy Bernard when Jim transferred from Scranton to Dunder Mifflin's Stanford branch. Right off the bat, they learned that he was a Cornell graduate who talked a big game and had an anger management problem. Throughout the show, Andy bragged about his family's name, his wealth, and his education. However, in the fourth season at the iconic goodbye party for Toby, Jim was planning on proposing to Pam. He paid extra for fireworks and was ready to pop the question when Andy took the stage and decided to propose to Angela on the same night. Oddly enough, Andy's parents were there and he introduces them as Andrew and Ellen Bernard. My parents are here. Andrew and Ellen Bernard. Thank you for sharing in this joyous moment. This insinuated that Andy was named after his dad. However, on season six episode, The Delivery Part One, Andy says he was named Walter Jr. after his father until he was six years old when his younger brother was born and his parents decided that he was more fitting for the name Walter. I was named Walter Jr. after my father until I was about six or so when my parents changed their minds. Though the hugely popular HBO series Game of Thrones has some magical elements that aren't guided by the laws of the world we live in, some things just don't make sense. Anyone who saw the season 6 premiere of Game of Thrones learned that the Red Woman, also known as Melisandre, has a pretty special necklace. It turns out she only appears young because of the choker necklace she wears. So naturally, fans were outraged by the apparent continuity regarding this particular enchanted necklace. In season 4, Melisandre 
appears to Stannis' wife as a young woman, even though she's not wearing her necklace. Karis Van Houten, the actress who plays Melisandre, later told Elle that was an oops moment. When series creator Vince Gilligan decided to set his tale of a chemistry teacher turned drug kingpin in the year 2007, he did it knowing that some pop culture references would be off the table. For most of Breaking Bad's run, the timeline was simple enough to follow, with time in the show passing much slower. But that led to one particular mistake in the show's fifth season, when one of the primary antagonists, Jack Welker, at one point says something about Osama bin Laden's death to his nephew, Todd. Taking out all these guys is doable but hitting him in three separate jails all within two minutes you whacking bin Laden wasn't as complicated. Unfortunately, the show was still set in 2010 at the latest. Still, several months before bin Laden's death took place, Vince Gilligan noted the mistake in an interview with Slate, saying that the writer had asked him how he would reconcile the fact that someone mentions the Osama bin Laden assassination in the year 2007, but Vince just decided he wouldn't. Phil Dumphy fancies himself a cool dad, but he tends to make his kids cringe with embarrassment. Though he might be kind of a clumsy goof, his flaws are what made him a Modern Family fan favorite. His lovable goofiness is part of what makes the whole series so great, while part of the glory is the popular series' varied writers. It seems something fell through the cracks when Phil fulfills his dream of tightrope walking in season 3. However, that shouldn't have been a dream to begin with, since two seasons earlier, Phil revealed he was already an expert at the tightrope, thanks to his time spent at trapeze camp. More than 12 years after the Friends episode called The One with the Mugging aired, Jordan D'Amico, a super fan of the show, has spotted a continuity error that everyone missed. In the episode, we see Rachel excitedly bursting into Monica's apartment to tell Joey that he scored an audition with Leonard Hayes. At this point, Rachel is still played by Aniston, but then Joey joins her in the doorway to talk about the news, before turning to face the rest of the gang, and that's where the mistake occurs. During a back and forth between Joey and Monica, a strange brunette appears in Jennifer Aniston's stead, just slightly out of frame, but obviously somebody who's not Rachel. The strange thing is she is also wearing a different outfit. The Simpsons is known for its fair share of continuity errors, as consistency is hard when it comes to animation. But this error is not about that, because we have been staring at it every day for 20 years. Whether or not you have ever seen The Simpsons, you've surely seen the classic opening credit sequence hundreds of times. The original opening was used for almost 20 seasons and contained a mistake never noticed. When Homer gets off his car and is almost run over by Marge, you can see a bunch of things in the back right corner of the garage, but when it cuts to the next shot, the bike, tools, rake, and all the other clutter are replaced by a couple of boxes. In the episode called Subway Wars, from the sixth season of the hit show How I Met Your Mother, the gang tests one another's knowledge of New York City transit by seeing who can find the quickest route to a downtown restaurant. In the first scene, Ted uses Bing to bring up a map on his laptop, but the mistake isn't that he's using Bing, as Microsoft might have paid for the placement. The mistake is the location visible in the top right corner of the browser. The map may show New York City streets, where the show takes place, but Bing reveals that they're actually in Los Angeles, California, where the show is filmed. Sometimes mistakes in movies or TV shows can lead to the most memorable scenes. The Seinfeld episode called The Parking Garage is a great example of this. The gang spends the whole episode looking for their parked car in a parking garage, without the ultimate punchline that once they find and hop into the car, it doesn't actually start. It's doubtful that the episode would be as impactful as it is. Funnily enough, the episode was meant to end with the gang driving off, but the car wouldn't actually start. It was decided that this was a far funnier end ending, and so it was kept in. In the same episode, there's also another mistake that could actually be seen if one looks very closely. The four recognizable friends are seen coming out of a parking garage's stairwell. The camera catches them emerging from the door, and a car drives past the frame revealing the reflection of the camera crew in the window in the frame's lower right hand corner. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.